right, we are diving into quality metrics and we are going to start with coupling. Uh, before we dive into that though, we have a couple of different ideas of different public repositories for doing analysis on. Um, I'm going to use this PSF requests repository. And in this uh, repository, we've got a number of different files. But one of the things that we do care about when we are analyzing the code is where are the actual source files? So the main parts of code, not the test files, not document files, not configurations, where's the actual source code? And in this particular example, if I were to click through all those folders, I would see that in this source requests folder, this is where all my Python files are. So in this particular example, source requests is the path that we're going to analyze. Other repositories, other projects might have most of the Python files in a different path. So you'll have to do a little bit of work to figure out where that is for your project that you are analyzing. All right, back to coupling. So what coupling does is this is a measurement of the dependency between the different packages and modules in a software system. We want low coupling because that means there's lower dependency levels and that's a healthier system and means we can touch fewer things when we need to make changes. Um, so we're going to use a tool called PyReverse. If you've already installed Pylint on your system, you should have PyReverse with it. You can confirm by typing PyReverse-H. This is going to give you the help manual for PyReverse. So if I, let's go ahead and make this uh, a little bit bigger here for our terminal. So I didn't get an error message. Instead, I got the way to use PyReverse. So it shows me PyReverse options and then packages. And then it shows me all the options. And in this example here, um, we have a number of different options that we're going to pass in. And then we also have, this is going to be the prefix. Um, that's the, the P option is our project name. This prefix is gonna go into the files we'll generate. And then here is where you can see the file path to where all of our source code is. So again, we looked through our repository, found our source path that has most of the Py files, um, and that's what we're gonna use. So let's go ahead and dive into this. So first of all, if I do ls that lists the files that I have and folders, I've already cloned this repository. So if I were to go back to the repository and then um, let's get back up to the main level here, click on this, I could copy this and I can do git clone and then paste in this path and then that downloads the um, this repository for me and then I have this now in my requests folder. Um, for this uh, analysis that we're doing, we're going to go ahead and go into that request folder by doing change directory cd requests. Now if I list out the uh, files again, I can see now I'm inside of the requests folder. You can see that in my path here. Um, so I put everything in this developer folder and now I've got my repositories called requests. And inside of that are all of the same files that you can see in here. Okay, it's not showing the, the dot files because generally those are hidden until you, um, unless you put in a flag to see it, but you can see this author's file, history, license, all of those are in here. And remember inside of source, so if I do ls source, I can see there's a request folder. If I do ls source requests, so I can see, list the system files that are in there. Um, I can see all those files that I was looking at earlier in GitHub. So this is what we're going to analyze. Let's go ahead and clear again. Now, I've got this line of code here or this, this uh, command. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in and I'll tell you what most of it does. So um, this, these options here are all listed out right here. You can read what they all are. This dash P is what we use to set our project name. In this example, I'm calling it requests code because we're in the requests project. And um, this is just gonna be attached to the file name. You'll see it in just a moment. And then uh, this is our path to the source code. So the dot 
means in this directory that I'm currently in, I'm currently in this requests directory, then go into the source folder and then in the requests folder. Okay, so you'll have to change that path to wherever your project is. And then this uh, prefix right here, name it whatever you want for your project. If I hit enter, now it's gonna do a little bit of work and it's generating a couple of files. Now what PyReverse does is it's a tool that you can use to help reverse engineer your Python project to get some diagrams. We're going to use the files that it generates, the dot files, and we're going to parse through the actual text of those files. So if I list it out, I can see now I've got two new files. I've got this packages requests code dot dot. Um, this is that prefix that I typed in. And then I also have classes request code dot dot. Now, what's in those files? What do we care about? We're actually, we only care about this packages file here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and look at that file. Um, let me see if I can make it. Nope, that's about as big as I can make it right now. But <clears throat> what you can see in this file, so here's where I um, uh, uh, to get the command to show it. And what this does is it gives me an output um, with a number of different things, but the parts that I care about are right here, where what this arrow means is that this has a dependency for this. It's importing this. Um, so we can look at the different modules and see what other modules or packages are being imported. Um, this is not something that's easy for us to use to analyze. So what we have is I've created this coupling code here. Um, or rather, uh, someone else has created it, and I've modified it a little bit to make it a little bit easier to work with. But you can download this, or you can um, copy and paste it. I'm going to go ahead and change directory up one, and I'm going to make a new file called coupling.py, and then I'm going to use vim to open coupling.py. And if you use start typing and then hit tab, that'll autocomplete for you. And if I type uh, the letter I, you'll see down here in the left-hand corner, it'll turn into insert. So now uh, I gives me the insert mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the raw file content. It's been copied. And in here, I'm going to paste. Now I've got it in here. Um, I can go ahead and hit enter. I've got one more line. What I'm going to do now is hit the escape key. That gets me out of insert mode. And now to type commands, I'm going to type the colon, and then I'm going to do wq. W writes it, q quits out of vim. That's how I've now just saved that file. You can also just download that file and save it in whatever folder you want. I like saving it near um, where I'm going to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit download just to show you. Um, and let's see if I can just open that in its folder. And um, I've got this developer folder here. I can just drag it right in there. Um, looks like I've already got a copy of it, but whatever. Uh, it's That's because I just made that one. Um, but that's what you can also do just through the graphical interface. You don't have to do it through Vim. So that's both ways to get that downloaded. OK, so now let me clear, uh, clear this, list out what I have. So now you can see I have my coupling file. OK, let's go ahead and go back to our instructions here. So I just downloaded this file. And what this file is going to do, actually, let's go ahead and look at it. Um, I'll just look briefly at it. Um, actually, it'll be easier to look at it in GitHub. Let's just open it in a new tab, because that'll give us all the color syntax. And let's just make this a little bit bigger. So what this is going to do is remember I was showing you how that dot file for the package has a format kind of like this where you've got the module and then an arrow and then whatever other module or package and you can see the dependency what's cup what is coupled to what um, so what we're doing is we're going to use a regex a regular expression to find these lines and then we're going to use that to um, count how many different dependencies we have. So uh, we've got, what it'll do is it'll output 
so that as it scans through it, it's gonna say tell you which modules are dependent on what, just so you can visually see what it's doing. And then when it's all done, what it's going to do is it's going to give you an, a, a, here's a little title just to tell you where it's starting, but the module dependency frequency. So how often is a dependency showing up in the different packages and modules? And it's just gonna print those values out and that's what we're going to be using, okay? So it will prompt us for where, what that, where that package file is first. So let's go ahead and um, back here so you can see, have an idea of what I'm doing. So first of all, let's um, remember where our file is. So remember uh, in requests, we have this file here. That's the one I care about, okay? Um, so I'm going to do Python 3 and then I'm going to do my coupling code. Again, if I hit tab after I typed a few letters, I can auto-complete. Here it is prompting me for that file path. So that path is going to be the current directory, requests, because remember I'm up in developer, and then we want this file here. So I'm going to type packages requests code, that's the prefix I gave it, dot, dot, okay? That's gonna now process it. It goes very fast, it doesn't take much to do it. And remember, here's the output so that I can see what it's doing, what it's scanning. So that's that human friendly, what's dependent on what. And then we've got frequencies calculated here for us. Now, what do we do with this number, um, these numbers? we can put those into a bar graph and get an idea of how, um, how frequently the dependencies are used. And I've got a screenshot here of what that might look like for you. Let's see if I can make that a little bit bigger, but we're going to make a column with those values. And then uh, for each of those values, we're going to calculate the frequency and then we can make a bar graph based on that. So let's see. All right, I've opened a new spreadsheet. Um, we're going to call it quality metrics and we're going to go ahead and try to follow the steps um, that I've provided uh, to get a general idea of how you might go about um, making some sort of a an analysis, a visual that you can use for your analysis. So. Let's jump back down to coupling. Um, and what we're gonna do, uh, let's see here, we've got, let's make a column called our dependency count. And then we'll say our value and our frequency. Um, and I think that'll be enough information to at least get us started. Um, in this B column we're just gonna not use right now. So our dependency count is this right here. So I'm gonna just see if I can copy, paste. Okay, um, they're showing up as a, a weird color, so let me just reset that. There they are. Okay, so I've got these dependency counts. So these are counts for each individual file. Now I can see that I don't have a ton here. I've got um, basically values that range between one and nine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do, I want to count how many times I see each value and anything above nine is, I'm just gonna call it more. Um, I don't know why this is visually being very strange for me. Um, but anyways, and then let's just go ahead and get everything lined up the same here. Wow, that's being a, a little funny to look at, isn't it? Okay, now for frequency, how do we calculate frequency? Um, in a spreadsheet, you're just gonna do a count if. So you're going to count the range and then the va uh, compare it to a value. So I'm gonna say equals count if, and then using this range, I'm going to compare it to the value next to it here uh, with parentheses. So how many ones, this is my value, how many ones are in this list? And I've got three, so I should be able to say there's one, two, three, okay? 
that's what a frequency is for a value. If I were to copy and paste this range, you can see, or this, this uh, formula, you can see my range changed, and that's gonna be a pain for me to have to change that for every single cell. So what you can do is you can um, get it to kind of lock in by putting a dollar sign in front of the cell letter uh, for the column and the cell uh, row number. So now I've got um, dollar sign A, dollar sign two, colon, dollar sign A, dollar sign 15. That's my range. So now if I copy this and paste it, you can see that range stayed the same. So you can see it's the same there. But my C2 changed to C3, so that's properly changing. So we're gonna copy and paste that all the way down to value nine. Um, but you can see that I didn't do that for this more um, because, well, more isn't a value I can look for here. Um, I don't actually have a 10 over there, but let's say that I had uh, a 20 here. Um, I don't, again, I'm not sure why it keeps disappearing. It's there. Um, but what I can do is I can say count if, and then we're going to just go ahead and include that 20 in my range this time. Um, and then instead of saying a different cell, I'm going to say greater than nine. Uh, Okay, so now it's got the 20. If I say uh, 10 here, see how it updates? So that's how you can do the more. Let me go ahead and undo that. Um, and let's do that again. So count if the range is greater than nine. All right, so now we've calculated the frequency that each of these values occurs in our list of dependency counts. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take these values and I want to turn that into a bar chart. So I'm going to insert a chart. And since I've already got it highlighted, it just did it for me. So we've got the values and we have the frequencies. Now here's the important part is make sure you say what this is for. So this is for the repository for requests. Give your, give your table, your chart a title and make sure you have a label for your y-axis and your x-axis so I can see what's going on. Um, and now I've got this nice little chart here that was very easy to make. And um, you can take a screenshot of that and include it in a paper um, and then tell me uh, or think about as you analyze this. So now this is a nice visual. And remember, we are looking at coupling and we want low coupling. So the more often these lower numbers occur in my project, the better. If I had higher bars over here at nine and more, I might be a little bit more concerned and I would want to uh, take a closer look at what kind of files have those higher dependencies. Is there a good reason for it? And if not, how can we move our project in the direction of lower coupling? So look at your chart that you've got and analyze it do some critical thinking what's good what's bad what might you consider changing if you were in charge of this project so that's how you're going to collect some coupling metrics and how you can turn that into a simple bar graph um, i'm going to go ahead and name this sheet just so i have an idea of what that is and uh, hopefully you can take that and apply it to any of these other projects here thanks for watching